Hey y'all, welcome back to another Science Olympiad Astronomy Review Session. These questions are taken from the Princeton University of Science Olympiad exam. Um, information will be down in the description below, but otherwise let's get right into it. So here we have an astrophysicist who needs to compute the distance to a certain star. Um, we're given an apparent magnitude of 7 and a mass of 1.9 solar masses, so we need to find the distance to the star. Um, we know the luminosity of a star in solar units is directly proportional to the mass cubed. So that's the relationship we're given to be able to solve this problem. Um, and we want to consider the absolute magnitude of the sun. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, let's draw the equation, uh, let's write the equation for distance. So D, this is the distance modulus, D equals 10, um, M minus M plus 5 divided by 5. Here is your apparent magnitude, and here is your absolute magnitude. So we have an apparent magnitude of 7 right here, but we don't know the absolute magnitude, so there needs to be some way to calculate it. Uh, absolute magnitude is a concept of a star's intrinsic luminosity. And what the question is suggesting is that we're going to compare the luminosity of this star to the luminosity of the sun so that we can calculate m. Um, so to do that, what we need to do is let's write down the equation for absolute magnitude. So to get the absolute magnitude of a star, you have m1 minus m2 equals negative 2.5 log base 10 of L1 divided by L2. So uh, this will be the luminosity of a star and its corresponding absolute magnitude. For the sun, what we can do is we can write m1 minus 4.83. That's the absolute magnitude of the sun. It's equal to negative 2.5 log 10. Uh, here we're going to put L star. And here we can put L sun. So now let's find what L star is, because that's all we need to be able to compute M1 right here. So we're given that the luminosity of a star is proportional to its mass cubed. So we have this equation then. Luminosity is proportional to mass cubed. Since we know that the mass is 1.9 solar masses, then we get that L star is going to be equal to 1.9 solar masses cubed. And let's do this in the calculator. Uh, we're going to get 1.9 cubed, 6.859. So 6.86 uh, solar luminosities. That should be that. And I guess you could write an M here, but that's okay. So yeah, now let's just plug it back into our original equation. M1 minus 4.83 is equal to negative 2.5 log 10 of 686 uh, solar luminosities, and then I guess you could divide this by one solar luminosity. And now when we do this on our calculator, uh, let's solve for what M1 should be, plus 4.83. Okay, so then we get that M1 is equal to 2.73. 2.73. So that's M1, and that's what we wanted right here. This is our M1 from earlier. So let's just uh, finish off this problem by plugging in what M1 is. So we're going to resize. So then we're going to do D equals 10 to the 7 minus 2.73 plus 5 divided by 5. And plugging this into your calculator, you'll get about 71.13 parsecs, which is your answer. So that's the first question. Uh, I hope that made sense. Um, look up what absolute magnitude and apparent magnitude is if you aren't familiar with these concepts before. They're pretty important for astronomy. Okay, so we have this question. Um, some astronomer gets the velocity curve of a star right here. Uh, if the star's mass is 0 0.8 solar masses and an exoplanet orbits this distance from the Berry Center, find the exoplanet's mass and assume the planet is transiting. This tells you the inclination angle is uh, 90 degrees, which is helpful, but um, our calculation method will be a little bit simpler. So I guess what you should do is draw a quick little picture um, not very detailed at all, star exoplanet right here. Uh, let's just draw a little circle your dot, and this is 0 0.4 AU is the distance. And it'll be orbiting this cir circle, pretend it's a circle. Uh, um, okay, so that's our picture. We've gotten a little bit of an understanding. So the equation you want to use for this type of system is we're going to use conservation of momentum, which basically implies that... Um, uh, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to zero, which essentially allows us to rewrite this as m star v star is equal to m planet v planet. That's what we're going to use. 
So the question gives us the star's mass is 0.8 solar masses, so we have it. From the graph, we can obtain the star's velocity, which is 30 meters a second. So we have that there. And then uh, we're solving for exoplanet's mass, so that's a question mark. And we need then, we need the velocity of the star. So because the orbit is assumed to be circular, there's a very easy calculation to get the velocity of the star. Uh, the velocity of the star is going to be that vp is equal to square root gm over r. This is the circular motion uh, for a star under Newton's law of gravity. So then we get that vp of the planet. Uh, we need the vp of the planet, by the way, not the velocity of the star. I may have misspoke earlier. But vp right here, velocity of the planet, is going to be equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass of our star. Um, that's your main body, which is 0 0.8 solar masses. So we're going to write 0 0.8 times 2.0 times 10 to the 30th uh, kilograms. Let's, let's move this over a little bit so we get more room to write with. That sucks. Let's erase that P. Okay. And then divided by 0 0.4 AU, which is going to be, uh, let's do that meters. Okay. So from that, let's see what we get for VP. Um, I'm going to plug this into our calculator real quick. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 0.8 times 2.0 times 10 to the 30th divided by 0.4 times 1.496 times 10 to the 11th. Okay, so you should get that V is 42,230 meters a second. Okay, um, so we have everything to solve the problem. We get that MP is equal to uh, MSVS divided by VP. So let's write that MSVS divided by VP, which is going to be 0 0.8 times 2.0, 2.0 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. So this is the mass of the star multiplied by 30 meters a second. We obtained this from the radial velocity curve of the star um, using principal conservation of momentum. And then we're going to divide that all by the velocity of the planet, which is 4 to 230 meters a second. And let's do this calculation real quick, uh, just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes in our process times 30. Okay, cool. So yeah, doing this all, you'll get a calculation that MP is equal to this value of kilograms. Uh, MP equals 1.136 times 10 to the 27 kilograms. Um, pretty easy to pick this option once you get the same order of magnitude. So you have to be a little bit more precise in your calculations. Uh, maybe that's an issue with writing the question. But regardless, this is your answer. Um, there's a few different ways to approach this problem, but this is the way I like to do it. Um, other people have different derivations for the same type of problem. And of course, this is assuming that we have a nice inclination angle. Otherwise, you get a minimum, minimum value for the mass. Okay, um, next question. Uh, we have an exoplanet orbiting a host star, and it completes a transit. Determine the exoplanet's radius in terms of the star's radius. Assume the exoplanet does not emit or reflect any light. Okay, so this question is pretty manageable. Um, uh, real quick, this should be D, not C, but that is okay. Okay, so we see that the initial brightness without the exoplanet transit is 100%, and then with the exoplanet uh, transit, it's 90%. So let's draw a picture. So this is no transit. And in this case, you have a star and an exoplanet. Uh, let's just do XO right there. And we're getting full light on Earth. So we're getting 100% here. So that means that uh, luminosity is equal to, you could write just the star, but if you want to be very technical, um, we're going to write this as 4 pi r squared t to the fourth Boltzmann constant. Uh, and this is basically the area we're getting multiplied by the uh, luminosity of the system, the black body. Okay, so this is when it's not transiting. Uh, let's resize this a little bit. But now we need to consider it when it's transiting, because that's the second case. So in transit, we have a big star right here, star. And then we have a little exoplanet right here, exoplanet. So right here, we're not getting 100% of luminosity of the star. We're normally getting this much, but right now we're being blocked out by the cross-sectional area of the exoplanet. So whereas 100% may be equal to r squared, 90%, uh, uh, let's write that, 90% is going to be equal to, uh, we're going to take the radius, the area of the big star, 
So it's going to be r squared pi minus the area of the little star. So this is our little star right here, radius. Uh, we can do r squared. And then since we're writing this as a percentage, we should really write this as over r squared pi. Okay, so this ends up being the equation you want to solve. Um, uh, you can write this as 0 0.9 equals that. So you solve this equation. So we're going to go ahead and erase uh, some of this. Let's erase it and then solve that equation right there. Uh, this equation right here is kind of useless, but you get the general picture. Okay, so then we have 0 0.9 pi r squared equals... Uh, we should have a pi right here, by the way. We need a pi right there. Okay, pi multiplied by r squared minus r squared. So the pi's go away. And then when we do this, we're going to get 0 0.1 r squared equals r squared. This negative will go away with the negative when we subtract this over. And so then you can just take the square root of both sides. Uh, so let's do that real quick. So then square root of 0.1 is 0 0.31. So then 0 0.31 r equals little r. Uh, and so let's see amongst the answer choices that will match up with B, 0.32 R star. Um, this is really 0.316 R, so the rounding is a little less ambiguous. Um, but that's how you approach the problem, which shows that this is actually a very massive exoplanet. Um, it might look something kind of like, if this is that, it might be like an exoplanet of like this order size, uh, where this is the star and this is the exoplanet. Um, but that's how you solve the problem, and so it shows even if you have a very massive exoplanet, the star is so luminous that the dip in luminosity is, I mean, this is only 10% right here, that's a very small dip in, or that's a large dip in luminosity, um, compared to what you would find in the observational, like the actual field, uh, when you're doing research. But regardless, that's how you approach this problem, uh, and that's the answer. Okay, last question. Uh, we have the James Webb Telescope detects an exoplanet in a system, a star of one solar mass. I'm sorry if you can't read it. Okay, we need to find the period of the exoplanet given an angular size of 0 0.115 arc seconds. System is 50 parsecs away. Okay, that's a lot of uh, information, so let's let's draw a picture. We have Earth here, and then we have a star here, and an exoplanet right here. Right, okay, this exoplanet is going to be orbiting circularly like that, and we have, we can draw this triangle right here. Okay, this is the triangle we're going to draw. This is our angle alpha. Uh, now let's see the information we have. So we're 50 parsecs away from the system, 50 parsecs, and then this has an angular size of 0 0.115 arc seconds. So then 0 0.115 arc seconds. Okay, and we need to find the period uh, of the system. So when we think of period of the system, you want to refer to Kepler's third law. That is that t squared equals a cubed over the mass of the sun, or the star that we're referring to. Um, and these are all in years, AU, and then solar masses uh, for the units we're defining here. Okay, so uh, we want to find A, which is the semi-major axis of the system. Um, we, we see that we have this right here, which is the angular radius. Uh, right now we're assuming the system is circular, which is not always a valid assumption, but we're doing that assumption for this problem. So then this is our value of A right here, and this is 0 0.115 arc seconds. Maybe I should erase this so it's a little bit less ambiguous. Okay, so then uh, we can write this equation that tan of alpha uh, is equal to A over 50 PC. This is just the trigonometric property of this triangle that we constructed, um, and then we can do tan of 0 0.115 arc seconds is equal to A over 50 PC. Now, uh, one thing to note right here is that the small angle approximation, since this is a super small angle, it's in arc seconds, uh, you can actually say that tan of alpha is equal to alpha, which is what we're going to do in this problem. So then 0 0.115 arc seconds equals A over 50 PC. Now, one thing that's very convenient about these units is that the units of arc seconds multiplied by parsecs actually returns astronomical units. So we can literally uh, just multiply these two together times 50 PC. Let's see what that equals. This, this will be in units of astronomical units, uh, which is really convenient. It's based upon the definition of what a parsec is and what an arc second is. is equal to 5.75 AU, 
which is our value of a. So then to finish this problem off, now that we have a, we just apply Kepler's third law, which we wrote here. So then we have that t squared equals 5.75 au cubed. And so when we solve this equation, uh, we get that t is equal to 13.8 years, which is going to be our answer choice right here. Okay, those are the problems. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. And uh, thank you for watching.